Okay, so this is the scoop. Okay. And I'll tell you quickly what I would like. I'm doing, it's almost like a rent to own, but it's not exactly the same. So it's, it's a model where uh, I go out and buy a house myself, but I buy it on sort of a, a vendor financing or something like that, right? Oh. And, and then, but first I find a tenant. So first I find someone who wants to live in that house mm -hmm. and they tell me exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. And then I go out and find the house mm -hmm. and then I put them in the house. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and they have three years to bring themselves up to being able to buy the house. So to save their down payment and to fix their credit or whatever it is there. And during that time, they're paying me rent, which is financing the house. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, but the thing is that the day I buy the house, that's the price they pay. So there's no appreciation on the house. They end up with a crazy return on their money. In this, you know, because so it's, it's very appealing to them much more so than the rent to own. So that is what I'm going to be doing. But I would like to have it all set up with um, sort of examples and stuff like that that I can put on the screen to show to you so that yet then you can um, you can show it all. Show me now. Hey? Show me now. Show me. I don't have anything set up because I was supposed to do it all this week, but... This sounds like exactly, you know, rent to own. That's exactly it. But you kept as a purchasing price... For me, what I do is I buy the house at the lowest end of the spectrum. So it's a fair price, but, you know, in every market, there's a bit of a difference in the prices, right? So one house on one street might be a bit lower than the other house. So I buy at the lower end. And also I'm buying without real estate fees and everything, as well as selling without real estate fees. So it means the price is lower. So that spread between what I buy and what I sell for is what I make and there's going to be cash flow. So when they're paying for the house, there'll be some cash flow there. Three years of cash flow. Cash flow, well, as a mortgage principal recapture. Yeah. Have you done it before? No, I'm just setting up all my um, paperwork and stuff. And I'm just about ready to put my ad out. Then you're confident to find those properties. Yeah. I am confident of finding them, especially now, you know, mortgage rates have gone up and people are a little bit freaked about when they bought, right? Because a lot of people bought at the high end of the market mm -hmm. and now they're paying really high interest rate. Yeah, I think, I think I'll be able to find those properties and the client. Like I would do it from here in Barrie, mm -hmm. but I, I won't do it in the city or anything like that. Fine. The main point is near GTA and, you know, close to GTA, there is no cash flow at all. Yeah. In the beginning... You have some makeup expense comes with that as well. But how yeah. are you going to calculate it as a purchase price? Purchase price or the after makeup the cost or just the pure you buying price? No, because I'm not going to do any any renovations. Okay. Then, so, yeah, okay. so I'm not going to buy fixer uppers. They have always occurred expenses, even closing cost, land transfer tax. The extra cost, another thirty, forty thousand dollars. But you see, if you can do vendor financing, mm. I hear what you're saying. So when the when the new renters move in, mm. they are also paying an option on the property. It's an option to purchase the property yeah. that they give me. So course, yeah. and it will go towards their down payment, mm -hmm. but it gives me money to spend on expenses that I have right then. For me, a little bit skeptical, the selling them exactly purchasing price. When I buy it, I buy it at the low end of the spread, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So say in one neighborhood, um, there's $500,000 houses and there's $580,000 houses. I buy at 500 or even mm -hmm. less because of the real estate fees, right? Mm -hmm. And then I would sell at the 580. So that's the price that on the low end of the fair market values. And it's without real estate fees. You're buying a lower end market price and then sell them higher end market price. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I have to research that in Wasega. Like there's, you know, there's this huge spread, right? So three, three bedroom, two bathroom houses can go for 550 mm -hmm. or they could go for 860. Down payment or? So no down payment. 
So it's all going to be vendor financed. Okay, 100% vendor financed. 100% vendor financed. Okay. So I have no money in the game. That would be fantastic. You find Wouldn't that. It? Of Wouldn't course. It? Vendor finance, how much do you think interest you give to them? So let's say if it is 8%. Current percent, $600,000 is 8% equal is, yeah, $48,000 per year. Per year. Yeah. yeah it's unbelievable. Three years, 144000 plus the 600 k we bought. So 744000 you're going to sell it. Because usually what you do is you would take the interest that you're paying and you would add two. So then my buyers would pay 10%. So my sellers charge me 8%. Then I charge 10%. Interest you're paying it on top of the purchase and price. That's what I did. No, and that is a, a possibility. And then also you're going to have $40,000 closing cost. The closing costs are the buyers. Yeah. Land transfer tax. But that's the buyer's problem, not mine. I only do it when I buy. Yeah. No, but I'm not. So I am switching title, but I'm not actually paying land transfer tax at that time. So I'm putting my interest on the title, but the seller stays on the title. So that means you're doing assignment sale. Kind of assignment kind sale. Kind of agreement. like that. But still, the seller on the title means... If they're not buying it, you're going to buy it. Your combined BTD or RTO and their assignments are all three combined together. But what yeah. is the current marketplace rent? The current place for a three bedroom is 3500 3500 uh, 48000 per year uh, divided by 12 is $4,000 per month, interest only. Yeah. So okay. they, because I'm going to hold the purchase price at the same level, this house is is only going to be worth 700 in three years. Mm. If the market keeps going the way it is mm. and you add 5% a year, right? So it would be worth 15% more the way the market usually is, right? Between four and 5% appreciation a year. You telling me five other kind of stories. I do not undermine your strategy. If you are able to find that vendor, amazing. Is their benefit. So any vendor financing is... They're getting interest of $4,000 per month. That, that's right. Instead of instead of getting a lump sum that they have to, which they, they probably won't have to pay tax on, but they would get income. And in this market, there's many seniors here. So they may wish to have an income to go on with their life rather than having a lump sum. But it could be true of many people because there's also many cottages here and people would be okay. Like we did a vendor take back on our property because the guy had his own home plus a cottage. So if we paid him outright, he's paying taxes, but we pay him monthly he doesn't have to pay taxes mm -hmm. so it's a big difference in terms of what you pay to the government so that's one advantage for a vendor take back i think the biggest advantage so if people don't need their capital right now then it could be a really good strategy for them and there could be many reasons for that you know yeah yeah i studied the, all those five percent increase or three percent increase the three years price Never thinking about go give them current market price because we have a lot of expense occur. Your sweat equity there too, you know, all connected together and make it product. Minimum yeah. three percent inflation each year. Yeah. Even city of Mississauga, they selling the city plot cemetery. They increase three percent per year. Uh, That's the reality. This is it's the reality. Three percent is minimum. Then five percent is the normal put them more down payment that means you can put them four percent covers all expenses to an equity yeah and then principal recapture earnings but the difference between this and rent to own is the people are paying the mortgage they're not paying rent so they are paying rent me i call it rent mm -hmm. but they pay more rent than market value said um uh, $3,500 rent, right? The mortgage interest alone is $4,000. Then, okay, you guys pay $4,000 for $3,500 and goes to the rent. $500 accumulated as your down payment after three years. No, 
so we don't accumulate any of the money. So that's up to them to do, to accumulate their down payment. So at the very beginning, they pay an option to purchase. So how much? They pay spend? about 7%. Of the seven percent to keep yeah. so forty two thousand dollars they paid as down payment. Yeah. Okay. So anywhere between thirty and fifty thousand dollars would be the option to pay. So, okay, forty two thousand. So even if they only had thirty, we'd kind of go with that. Okay. And then it would be up to them mm -hmm. to get the rest of it. Can you elaborate why they pay more than the regular rent? Because I am holding the price of their property mm. at that value. Mm -hmm. I'm not augmenting the price of their property. Basically, they're paying higher rent. A concrete number. Yeah, so rent I hear is, you. Rent is 3500 How much do you expect them to pay? Pay more. So how much? Specifics of the case, right? So in this case, such an interesting discussion. It's been narrowed down. A concrete numbers. Everything is a, this game is a numbers game. There is a, no such thing as just imagination. Imagination doesn't help has to be narrowed down. Even though I'm a theologian, we pray to God, more details, please help me. So, so what? How? Did detailed prayers yeah. help you walk through it? You have to really, really narrow down. And the tenants and buyers, sellers, everything clear. Has to be clear. Yeah. Communication. Oh, you okay. are so good for me. This is so wonderful. Thank you so much okay, for okay, sharing okay. your knowledge. In the beginning, clear instructions. That's yeah. the key of success. You are the orchestra of the conductor, right? Yeah. The conductor has to be strong mindset to conduct it. Otherwise, everything chaos, especially first deal. Remember, you're the conductor of orchestra. Very good. That's a very good analogy. Yeah, to be so strong minded and clear about it. I don't know about much countryside of the market. So if yeah. you're coming with those strong eyes, I'm in, I'm in. Okay, okay, let's do it. Everyone can be pro-investors if you do quick action. Not only thinking, not only understanding, not only you know it. Has to be followed by actions. If you agree, thumbs up and subscribe. Thank you for watching. See you next video.